Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lesson 6, More Transformations of Graphs. This is Mrs. Campbell, and let me remind you guys that you're going to be needing to have a calculator handy. In fact, we're going to begin with a calculator today. We're going to do a little bit of experimenting with graphs and then kind of review the different things that we've talked about related to transformations. And then, of course, we'll put those into practice. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, the first couple questions ask us to do some graphing on our calculator. So please grab your calculator. I'm grabbing mine right now. And we're going to go into our y equals. Now I happen to have equations from the last lesson still in my y equals. I just cleared them out. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph y equals the absolute value of x. And we're going to compare that to y equals the absolute value of x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is put in my calculator the absolute value of x. Do you remember where that is? Go to the math menu, arrow to the right where it says NUM for number, and absolute value is the first option. So ABS is what it looks like. And when you type that in, it'll say either ABS will give you the absolute value bars of one of those things, and then just type in the X. And then go to Y2, and we're going to graph um, the absolute value of X minus 2. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's just graph the absolute value of X just to remember what that looks like. So as soon as you have that, type in a zoom and then hit the 6. Zoom 6 will give us that negative 10 to 10 window so that we can have the what the parent function looks like. And now I know you remember, but just to be sure, this is what I see when I just graph that. That absolute value graph is just the V graph. So here's the V graph. So now the question is going to be, once you know what that looks like, what is putting a subtraction of 2 on it? do or an adding of 6 do. So now I want you to go ahead and put in y2, the absolute value. So again, math and select absolute value and x minus 6. Sorry, where did I get 6? x minus 2 and graph. I just graphed mine. Now you, you're probably going to notice is that the shape looks exactly the same, except guys, it's shifted to the right 2. Interesting. So this one went to the right two. All right, so what do you think putting a plus six is gonna do? Well, let's see if you're right. You've got an idea in your head, right? Okay, so I just changed my minus two to a plus six, and I'm hitting graph, and here's what I see. I hope you're doing this with me. Oh goodness, it's way over here. It is shifted to the left, and how much do you suppose? Yeah, it looks like it's about six, and it is. It is left. Six. Now this is a review, and I remember that you you know you know this from last year, so I'm sure that this is not a big deal. But just wanted to just see it again, just to make sure you kind of get it all clarified in your mind. Um, for the next one, I'm going to put the plus three outside. So go to your y two and delete that that uh, x plus six, and then type in the absolute value of x and get outside of that. So if you're working with the TI eighty three, close the parentheses and then do plus three. Or if you're working with a TI-84, hit the right arrow to get out of the absolute value before you put the plus 3, and then graph that one in. And again, I'm always graphing the original because it's nice to see them side by side. And so what I'm seeing this time is a graph that's way up here and looks the same. So what happened this time? It went up 3. All right, and then finally, putting a minus 4 at the end, I'm just going to overwrite it, so I'll just go where the plus 3 is and type minus 4. I think it's going to go down 4, but I don't know. Let's see if it does. Graph, and did it go down 4? Oh, yeah, it did. How about that? All right, so this one went down 4. All right, so we have now an example of each of the different things that can happen. So what I'd like you to do right now on your own is predict, in other words, take a look at each of these and tell me what you think is going to happen, and then verify by graphing. Now let's do the first part together where we graph the parent function. So when you go to your y equals, clear out what you have in there. So I'm going to clear everything out now, new parent function. In other words, I want to know that this isn't just true for absolute values. What I think is going to happen, is it also true for square roots? Let's find out. So type the square root. We hit second x squared. That's the square root button. Hit x. That's my y1 graph. And when I graph it, this is what I see. So here's my parent function. Now what you're going to do, one at a time, and I'm going to hit the pause and let you do this, 
In y2, I want you to put the square root of x minus 4 and graph it and see if it does what you think it's supposed to do. Do the same thing with the second and then the third and then the fourth, just like we did the first one. So have in your brain what you think it's going to be and then graph it and see if you're correct. Are you ready? All right, go ahead and do that now. All right, I hope you went ahead and confirmed all the things that you think were going to happen um, because they do. So the rules that we are about to write are going to be the rules that are true for all functions not just absolute value, not just square root, but any kind of function that you can even imagine. And that is what these last two cells here on the right are for. So let's go ahead and fill those in first of all. So f of x minus h. When you have something with the x as we have here, as we have here, here, and here, those are going to be shifts always or translations to the left or right. So I'm going to write here shift left or right and it's going to depend now it's going to go to the left plus it's going to go to the right if it's minus does that seem backwards to you it certainly does to me and remember we talked about f of ax that's this one right here we talked about that one the other day and said it kind of does backwards from what we think it's supposed to do x's guys they're always like that they always do the opposite of what we expect them to do so kind of keep that in mind we also know then from the other ones that we looked at that's these guys that I'm putting boxes around here. Those are also translations. They shift up or down. They're going to go up if it's plus. They're going to go down if it's minus. And that is exactly, I'm going to make that look like a U, exactly what you think it's supposed to do. So the Y value things, they do what you think they're supposed to do. The X is and they always do the backwards thing. All right, so those two things are new today. The other four things are from yesterday. Let's see what we remember about those. Take a look at this first block, first cell, negative f of x. If you know what f of x is, what does negative do to it? Well, remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. And so this is saying make your y negative. And y's are up and down. Or make your y opposite is another way to say that. Y's are up and down. So up and down, up and down, switch. That is a reflection over the x-axis where f of negative x, that x that's making the x's opposite that's going to also be a reflection but it's going to switch the left and the right so that's going to be a reflect over the y-axis uh, the remaining ones when you put numbers in front of the function or in front of the x value um, a times f of x, that is going to be a vertical stretch. Vertical because it's applying to the y value, which is an up and down. So vertical stretch or compression. It's going to stretch. If a is bigger than 1, it's going to compress. If it's between 0 and 1, remember if it's negative, it gets reflected. And then finally, when you put it on the x, those are horizontal things. So that's going to be a horizontal stretch or compress but here's where things are again backwards because x's are backwards things it's going to stretch if it's a small number and it's going to compress if it's a big number all right so six things and that's it guys those are the only six things that we're ever going to talk about we're going to go ahead and now review those and we're going to write down some steps so in the next question here examples kind of like look at the equation and see what you notice this says, describe the transformations of f of x to obtain the graph of g of x. So here's what g of x is. If I knew what f of x was, what would this look like? Well, I can see two things here. I've got a multiplication by 2 and I've got an x minus 4, which means two things are going to happen. Does it matter what order you do those two things in? Well, the answer is yes, it does. And again, I mentioned this in our last lesson, but not very much. Uh, we are going to be using this rule, PEMDAS. PEMDAS is going to be the thing that helps us out with our rule. Remember, it stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, exp exponents, we aren't going to be doing anything with exponents, but you can square a function and it does do something to the graph. We just aren't learning about that today, so I'm just going to scribble that out because we won't be using that. So I'm going to go with more like a PEMDAS without the E. All right, so taking a look at this function. 
I see parentheses, and inside the parentheses is x minus 4. So the first thing I would do, and I'm going to put a bullet here, thing 1 is going to be a shift. And since it's with the x, it's going to be in the x direction, and x is our backwards. So where you think this might be left, it's actually right. So this graph is going to get shifted to the right 4. Then there's a 2, and that 2 is in front of the f of x, or the y value, and that means it's going to be a vertical thing. And since that number is bigger than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch by 2. So if I were going to produce the graph, those would be the two things that I would do. All right, well, what about the next one? What would be the two things I'd do here? There's two things involved. There's a negative and a plus 8. So when I look at the order of operations, I have parentheses, but there's nothing in the parentheses but an x, so nothing to do there. Then there's an m, which stands for multiplication, and there is a multiplication here. This f of x is being multiplied by negative 1. That negative is a multiplication. So what does that do? Well, when you make the y's negative, that means the up and downs are going to switch. That is a reflection over, got it, the x axis. That's right. And then the plus 8 at the end, when it's at the end, we can say it's sort of attached to the y value, which means it's going to move in the y direction. And since it's plus, that means it's going to go up. So it's going to go up 8. Now, I hope you're jotting this down, right? This is why you have your lesson packet, and I hope you always get that out before you begin. I should, probably should have mentioned that right away. Um, and get our notes down so that when we go to practice with our homework, we have something to look at. All right, let's try some other examples. Um, again, continuing this same idea, and then in our last examples today, we're going to be doing some sketching. So for this one, oh goodness, it looks like in this next one that we've got three things to do. We've got a multiplication by a third, we've got a negative in front of the x, and we have a minus 6 at the end, and we have to do them in the right order. So again, what's the order? The order is PEMDAS. But we're not doing anything with exponents. So first thing, parentheses. Do I have anything in parentheses? You bet I do. I got a negative in front of the x. That is a negative being multiplied by the x. And what does that do? That's thing one. That is a reflection. A reflection over what? That's the hard part to remember. So I'm going to write here reflection over, and then I'm going to think about it for a second. The x's are going to be negative, which is the left and right. So the left and the right are going to switch. That means it's flipping over the y-axis. Next up is multiplication. And we do have a multiplication by a third. That third is in front of the f of x, which is just like the y. So the y is getting multiplied by a third. That means it's a vertical something. And since the one-third is less than one, it is a vertical compression by a third. And then the final thing is the subtraction at the end. Remember, subtraction in the PEMDAS, that's the last thing. That is going to be, in this case, a shift because it's an adding or subtracting, and that's a shifting then. So it is a shift, and because it's a negative or subtraction, it's going to be down. Oops, I wrote, uh, I wrote two. Not sure why. It's supposed to be a six. Boom, done. All right, take a second, guys. I'd like you to think through and try this next one on your own. Again, I'm going to hit the pause button, and I want you to play along with me here. So you try it. This is how we learn. We try something, and we then we confirm whether we are correct or not. So give yourself a chance to try this one on your own. So write it all out, and then we'll compare in just a second. Okay, so now it's time to self-check and see how we did. So three things, oh, four things actually to do. Did you catch four things? So I'm going to write right away one, two, three, four. And order matters. Let's make sure we do them in the right order. So what's the first thing you wrote? I hope you wrote shift right five. And why is that first? Because it's in parentheses, PEMDAS. Next thing that we would want to do, and actually there's two things here, and these two are tied. So what order you write these in does not matter. You've got both a four and a negative, and they are both multiplications. It does not matter which one you do first. So you could do the multiplication by four. That would be a vertical stretch by four. Then you could do the negative. That's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. And then, of course, the final thing is the plus 1, and that's 
and up one and down. Now these two again could be in either order and you would still be correct because they're both multiplications. All right, how'd you do? Did you get it? Awesome, because we're now actually going to go ahead and do that. So for our remaining questions, I have four graphs here and I'm gonna just kind of zero in on each one. So I'm gonna do one at a time here. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is write out your list of things you're gonna do and then do them in that order. So for example, in number one, what's the first thing I would have to do? Well, if in your brain you're saying write two, you'd be correct. And then at the end, there's a minus one, that means down one. So I am going to do those two operations and I have to select some points to do that. So the points that I'm gonna select, um, you know, they, you can use lots of different ones, but I kinda of like this one and this one. I need those, because those are like turning points. Um, I really like this one here, because it's an x-intercept for one thing, but it also is a crosshair. I could choose other points on that graph if I wanted to, but these two points here would make up the line, and that's all I really need. And then on the other side, I could use the x-intercept, but it's sort of an in-between number. I think I'm gonna go for this one instead. So for each of the questions that I'm choosing to do today, I'm gonna to use those four. Ready? Here goes. So I'm gonna put my pen right on that point, and then I'm gonna go right two and down one. So I'm putting my pencil, and you do this with me, guys. Put your pencil right on that dot. See, mine's right on that dot. You can't see it, because you can't see my pen, but it is. And I'm gonna go right two, one, two, down one, down one, and then what do I do? I always make an X. And again, the reason I make an X is so I don't confuse it with the dots that I have. And then I'm gonna go to my next point. Put your pencil right there. Go right two, one, two, down one, one, down one, and make an X. Then go to the next one. Right two, down one, make an X. Right two, down one, make an X. Those are the same four points. I know how to connect them and done all right not too bad right okay now if you didn't finish that go ahead and finish it now and then we're going to move on to the next one all right our next example now ready for this one this one only has one thing to do super easy right and the three is in front of the f of x which means it is going to be a vertical stretch by three, and since it's a vertical, what I'm gonna do for each question or each point that I select, I'm gonna say, how high is it? Make it three times higher. That's how I'm gonna produce that graph. So the points that we're gonna use, I'll just choose the same ones I had before. I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, and I like this one. And you can use more if you want, but you can't really use less. I need each, at least that many points. So here goes. First point, how high is it? Then I'm over here, guys, this one right here. How high is it? It's at zero. Make it three times higher. Still zero. That's an X. This point at the negative two. How high is it? Well, it's down two. Make it three times higher. That's going to be three times down two. That's going to be down six. So two, three, four, five, six is going to be just slightly off the graph. Next one, same thing. How high is it? Down two. Make it three times higher. Down six. All right. And then finally, last dot, how high up is it? It's up one. Make it three times higher. That's up three. And now you can see that nice vertical stretch when we plot our points here. Darn it, I missed that one. Probably get a straight edge, right? I uh, hit that one pretty good. But you can see how it's vertically stretched in the graph. All right, let's continue on. Let's move on to our next one. Oh, and our next one... You know what? I'm gonna change this one. I wanna change it because guys, we don't have any that have any horizontal compressions or stretches. Let me switch this question. So instead of this one, we're gonna do K, well, let me change color too, just for fun. Let's change it to green. We'll go K of X equals, oh, we can still make that negative, but let's do F of two X instead plus three. So I'm adding an extra thing on there. I think that's gonna, we need to practice that. In fact, I think that's the hardest thing there is. So definitely worth time practicing, right? So what do we have to do? Well, the two in front of the X, remember that's in front of the X and X is our horizontal things. So thing one in the parentheses, I'm gonna have to do a horizontal, oh, is it gonna be a stretch or a compression? Oh, you are right, it's a compression because they're backwards from what we think. That's one of the reasons why I think it's the hardest. So a horizontal compression by what? 
it's always the reciprocal. In other words, flip the number upside down of what's in front of the X. The X has a two in front of it. The reciprocal is one over two then. So it's a horizontal compression by half. Then what? Next, we have that negative. That negative is in front of the Y value. That means it is going to be a reflection. All negatives are going to be reflections. All adding numbers are going to be shifts. And all multiplying numbers are going to be stretches or compressions. This is going to be a reflection. And it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Because the ups and downs are going to switch. And then from there, up Three. Boy, that's a lot to keep track of. So I want you to put your pencil down and just watch. Now, I, this is sort of hard for me to show you because you can't see my pen. So I'm going to use a floating red dot here and see if this helps. So I'm going to switch to a dot here and I'm going to start with, whoops, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. I need to get my points on here first. These are my points. One, two, three, four. Those are going to be the same four points I used every time. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my red, little red dot here. So this is where I'm at. See my little floater? Can you see that now? Okay, right here. I am going to compress it by half. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in by half. That's going to take it from 2 to the left to 1 to the left. Then I'm going to reflect it over the x, which is not going to move it at all because that's on the x-axis. And then from there, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to make a dot. Okay, so here goes. Dot time. Now my problem is I have to remember where that was. And I think it was right here. Okay, kind of get what I'm doing. Now I want you just to watch because I do think it's a little bit harder. Now I'm going to take this point right here. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is compress it horizontally by half. It's on the y-axis. So moving into the y-axis by half isn't going to move it at all. Then I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis so it's two below. That's going to move it to two above. That's right here now. And then from there I'm going to go up three. One, two, three. So take my pen. That's right here. Okay, going again. This is my dot. I'm going to compress it by half. So I'm going to come into the y-axis by half. So it's at 2 to the right. It's going to go to 1 to the right. I'm going to reflect it over the axis. It's the x-axis. It's 2 below. It's going to go to 2 above. That's right here. And then I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And there I get. Okay, one more time. Last point is right here. I'm going to compress by half. Right now, it's at 3 to the right. It's going to go to 1 and a half to the right. That's will be, that'll be right here. Then I'm going to flip it. See, by the way, I like having my little list because I don't know if you can, you probably can't tell, but I'm reading that list every time. So I read horizontal compression by half, and I did that. Now reflect over the x-axis. I'm going to do that. That's why I like that list. And then up 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be... I think it was, why not forget, I gotta do it again. Uh, one, flip it, one, two, and it was right here. Okay, all right, now connecting. You know, the shape is gonna stay the same, so it's not gonna be some wonky looking thing, right? It's still gonna have that same kind of a shape, but it is upside down because it got reflected and it is narrower left and right because it got compressed horizontally and it's up higher because it went up higher. All right, that's what that graph looks like. Now. Go ahead and hit the pause button and do it yourself. So you watched me do it. Now try to produce it on your own. Go ahead and do that now. All right, did you get it? Sometimes it's hard to watch and do it at the same time. All right, last example here, guys. Last one. Last one now has, um, well, it's got three things on it to do here as well. It's got, oh no, it's got two things to do. It's got a left two. And it has a one half out in front. So the left two, well, I guess I said left two, that's left two. That'll be the first thing I do. And then the one half is in front of the f of x, so that's going to be a vertical compress by half. All right, here goes. My dots, putting on those red dots here, these are going to be the ones I use. Now, and that's part of what you got to think about is how many points do you need? And you are welcome to always use more. Ch chance I can't use less, but could use more. All right, don't think I need to be too big deal on this one. I'm just going to put my hand on that point on the far left here, and I'm going to go left two, and then I'm going to compress it, but that's not going to move it anywhere. Compressing as zero is still zero. For the next one, I'm on the y-axis right now. Left two, compressed by half. So it was at two, and I'm at a half. 
uh, the one on the bottom corner on the right, left two, compress by half, that takes me right here. And then left two, compress by half, takes me right here. And you know, in the end, you can still, again, see kind of all the things. Now, what you'll be doing, of course, in your homework now is practicing. And I do have answers posted, so if you have questions, of course, you can check those and see how that goes. Um, and you can ask me questions at any time as well. All right, so that's it for today. So get right to it. Good luck, everybody.